But this is a wonderful case. That's yeah, the way I'm going to do definitely. It. I just put that's what thought. Why can't I live this shit out of my life? Oh, easily. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but aren't you already? I think you already are, aren't but you? But really living the shit out of it, like up and upper level. I think that's happening. Well, I hope so. And I want to infuse, I want her, my character to wake up one day and go, F it, I'm going to... I'm very good to learn to blink yes, out those I words. Um, I'm going to absolutely go for things. Like I, want, I kind of got excited by that idea of a turning point where you realise, hold on, why can't I just do things? But yeah, the twisting of that wedding ring... I remember doing that, I remember sitting on the train, this is embarrassing really, but I used to sit on the train and honestly stare at my wedding ring and think, mm. I'm so lucky, I'm loved. Mm. I know that feeling. I like used to have a wedding ring now. in my first marriage and it gave me a rash. It was a bit of a sign really. So yeah, they're not always good things. But it just shows me when I look back of how, the, what a, not, I don't want to say pathetic, but I just, I look back and realise, well that's a silly thing to get self-esteem from. And going back to fangirls, these 14 year old mm. girls, one of the lines was something about, I don't want to be half of someone else to feel yes, whole, exactly. you know? So it's very good to talk about this stuff and get it out there. The, yeah. the whole quest is to be whole in yourself, not to be half of somebody else. Exactly. Be so that alive. was a good memory. But yeah. what I've been doing, I've found that, you're right, your subconscious goes on little yeah. twists and turns and yeah. I've been grabbing it and just... Um, Have you been doing any eavesdropping? Um, not so much no. eavesdropping, but more, yeah. Yeah, no, good on you. Yeah. That's, yeah. So look, I just Keep more, going. it's tuning into my thoughts that are in the recesses of my mind yeah. a bit more and yeah. being aware because yeah. they float in and out and I haven't been aware, whereas now I'm like, oh, I rush up and grab the pink book and pop it in. Good on you. So yeah, you're I, I'm it. loving it. You're using yes. you in your book so All what's right, happening well, with our guest yeah what we'll do is we'll we'll stop for the moment and we'll come back um in a magic second which you won't even hear uh with our guest who's we're very excited to uh introduce to you in a moment so it's time to open our clinic with our our second only guest on the show yeah. a very special guest who um helen i'll um, throw to you to introduce. Yeah, I'm, I feel very uh, honoured to introduce my publisher and longtime editor, Jude McGee from HarperCollins Australia. And Jude is probably, I've got various publishers who interfere with my work around the world, <laughs> and Jude is probably the one voice I trust. And uh, because we have a shared sense of humour, I absolutely trust her taste. And uh, now we're very good friends. So it, for me, it's uh, a very powerful, unique uh, connection Jude and I have. And it's wonderful that you've agreed to come on to <laughs> novel therapy. Thanks, Jude. <laughs> so tell us, uh, tell us about what you do there. So Jude, how many books would you be responsible for in, in say, a year? Um, I think it's sort of, you know, anywhere between 12 and 20. Um, so, uh, yeah, quite a few. Um, and that's in one year and often you're working also on books that are coming out the year after. And even once books are out, you're still, um, you know, talking to the authors, sales, chasing up things on rights and all sorts of things. So you end up working on quite a lot of books at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
And June, how do most titles land on your desk? Is it through an agent or have you commissioned them or have people just sent them in? Mm. And I was just going to ask, well, how does that commissioning happen then? How do you sort of find these people? Um, I guess we're, we pay a lot, even on fiction, we're paying a lot of attention to what's um, happening in the world around us and who's um, writing about issues, who's speaking about issues. Um, we, you know, we, we're always looking for good writers and often writers are being published in places, mm. um, whether that, that's, you know, online or in, um, you know, um, newspapers or magazines. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's a lot of our sort of even on fiction, we're, we're kind of looking at, at who's writing. Mm. And what's hot at the moment? Are there some trends that you're interested in at the moment? We just lost you a little bit there due to the connection. Would you mind just repeating that? Sorry. When you look at a manuscript and it lands on your screen, you know, how long does it take you to realise it's going to work for you? I hate to say it, but pretty quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, we definitely look at, at writing is always really important. Um, sometimes more important than, than other stories. Um, Helen, It's a pretty tough world, Jude. It is tough. Mm. Yeah. How, how in, your, in your career, like, how do you see the landscape of writing and publishing um, now as opposed to perhaps, you know, earlier in your career? How, how, how have things changed? Things have changed. And when I say that about having a platform, it's very much non fiction. Fiction is different. Um, fiction is about the writing mm. and the craft. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
months on the brain. Um, but you know, when something leaps off the page, it, it's it can even if it doesn't fit in with the trend, it but it is oh well, here's a new trend. Here's mm-hmm. one we didn't we didn't imagine, but wow, we can see readers, you know, just loving it. Um, yeah. So if you're it's, it's oh. a, Oh, sorry. oh, if you're a fiction writer, um, you would expect the three chapters and uh, a chapter outlines rather than a whole manuscript. Is that right? To, to start with, yeah, I think that's a good idea. An outline too, chapters, a little of the bio, um, and then if if um, the publisher likes the three chapters, they will definitely ask to read more. It's unusual but not unknown to acquire a novel to publish based on less than a finished manuscript. Mm -hmm. It does happen um, if something is really fantastic. Um, But, you know, particularly with fiction, you're looking to see that that a story is sustained, that, um, you know, if it's a crime novel that it ticks the boxes in terms of twists and and the new and, and all of that say. Um, so fiction very much is um, more often acquired um, based on a, a full finished manuscript. Um, non-fiction less so. So um, often we will acquire something based on a, a sample chapter or a few sample chapters. Mm. What's a good print run for Australia, dude? In non-fiction and fiction, are they different? Uh, they can be different. Um, we, we often say a bestseller is 10,000 copies. Um, and um, print runs have gone down over the years. Um, it's harder. The, I think there was a um, board of And what, what do you attribute that to? Some kind of X factor? Is it luck? Um, I think I attribute to, you know, we attribute it to a lot of things. Um, for example, um, one of the books, uh, something is published, not me, um, is um, Boys Follows the Universe by Trent Dalton. Um, and that was his first novel. Um, everyone Do they love it because of the characters? Is that one of the reasons? Um, I think they, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons. Great characterisation. Um, it's set in a time and a place um, that sort of brings, uh, you know, resonates with, with readers, mm-hmm. but also the voice, um, a really, really strong narrative voice. That's, mm-hmm. Um, Jude, a lot of our listeners and and myself as well are sort of um, 
aspiring writers in one way or another. What, what sort of advice would you give to people um, like us from your point of view? Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're aspiring to, aspiring to write fiction, um, I'm a great believer in craft, um, which is, you know, paying attention, well, going and reading some of your favourite books, but reading them with a, with a you know, an, an eye to how do they paint their characters, mm -hmm. how do they structure their, their plot, how do they, where do they use description, and where, when are they using scenes, and when are they using summary, um, and all those those things that go into the craft of novel writing. Um, you know, the great the greatest novelists are great craftspeople, and um, you know they had to learn their craft. I believe. You know, obviously people have a, a natural talent for it, but um, and often there are people who do have a natural talent have actually done a lot of reading and have absorbed. Also, Jude, I don't think you can underestimate the input of a, of a fine editor. I know that publishing houses are under such pressure these days, a lot of people who work in them don't have the time to give authors much guidance, but I must say that's something I have really appreciated from you, and I think, uh, I don't think many writers can assume they're going to get that kind of help and guidance. Oh, that's reassuring. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I really do. I think it's, I mean, everyone, you know, that's part of the curation of, of um, mm. you know, publishing a good book is making sure that it's as good as it can be. Mm. Um, and I think most sort of publishers worth their, their salt are still putting the time in and the effort and the money into that. Um, it, particularly because otherwise all the other effort you put in is goes to waste you know if you haven't done that part of the job then all the selling and all the all the marketing and the bells and whistles doesn't matter what you throw at it if it's not quite there um then it's you, you know it's wasted effort essentially mm. and what do you love about your job jude um i think what i love about it is um no two books are the same which means Every day is different. Mm -hmm. um, I love working with authors and I love working with my colleagues. I, I sort of work with a, an entire company full of book lovers, which is kind of fun. Um, and so there is that sort of shared passion that um, people have um, for the books that we work on and the authors that we work with. So, yeah, that, that's what makes it great. Mm -hmm. It's the smell of paper, dude. Smell of, mm, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah. What? And when, do, when, when a new, you know, when a book comes back from the printer, mm. um, you know, it, it is the first thing everybody does. They pick up the book and, and smell it. So, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> <laughs> there was just it. one thing I wanted to ask. What's your opinion on uh, doing writers' courses? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jude. I, I'm sure our listeners will have got a lot out of um, hearing from you, and we certainly have. So thank you so much for giving us your time. Um, this She's has been great. The best.
specialist we've ever had. I know. I think we're both very <laughs> giddy and excited. Thank God the technology worked. That was very exciting. Mm, it did. It did. Hooray. Yay. Yeah. But thank you so much. And um, yeah, hopefully our paths might cross again in the future. I think I met you at um, the launch for Tumbledown Manor in Melbourne. Was that? That was last year. Was oh, no. It was 11 years was it? ago. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. For Bono. Oh, for Bono, sorry. Yes, yes it was. I'm getting yeah. my wires crossed. Yeah. In Carlton. Right. Yeah. Yes. It was. Yes. Thank you so much for having me and good luck with your dog, okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. What was that? I didn't hear that. Chat, yeah, yeah, lovely to chat. With no yeah. prosecco, we're not drunk this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit better that way. Oh, really? <laughs> not quite a cigar. <laughs> no, we're not quite. Just a cup of tea time. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, thank you again, Jude, and we'll um, we'll let you get back to your fabulous job. It does sound it does sound pretty cool. I'm sure a lot of people out there would love that. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, Jude. Bye, Jude. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was home. fun. Oh, it was good. We did it. Holy Gosh, crap. I hope. I hope. Um, That's good. So it's all there. How long was it? That was so that bit there was tw about. I reckon it was about 20, 25 minutes. Mm, that's good. So that's perfect. Mm. And then I reckon we finish it now. So like, as in, finish our bit. So we can all because I can slice and dice it all together hopefully you mean get the cat we could get the cat we can and just i've got a planet social bit oh yeah we can yeah. do our you know, oh yeah our we're, done the, sort of uh, we're not doing the live but yeah when yeah. we do the live but i must get the cat oh live yeah. yeah get the cat for live okay okay so and, when oh god i haven't got any prescription for you well i mean look having heard all that i think her prescription was take your craft seriously mm. i mean i can mm. take that out of what she mm. said i mm. think yeah so maybe we just literally start now and just wind up say we've just had an interview with you yeah. and, and you can just summarize what you yeah. thought she was kind yeah. of saying and yeah. um i've got a little bit i was going to do a little quick thing on linkedin okay okay oh, well. yeah yeah pretty yeah. harsh rock drop mm. so um. now i don't know whether to it doesn't matter about the headphones now does it i'll just leave them on anyway we don't need to hear all right so i'll just isn't she great again. she's, she's great. lovely mm -hmm. yeah all right so all right, so that was our interview with Jude McGee from HarperCollins. Well, it was, wasn't so much an interview, it was your specialist consultation because I <laughs> felt you were ready <laughs> to see a specialist at this stage in your, not what we would say, journey, but in your... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that was amazing. That was so um, such an amazing opportunity to hear someone right in the industry. Yes. Yeah, yeah you it's know. pretty intoxicating actually it is. isn't it you it can is. see why people get kind of we can and it. it's hard not to romanticize when jude was talking about smelling a new book and you know just the pleasure she gets from working with writers and book lovers like fellow book lovers at her work mm. you do sort of idealize it a little bit yeah. and think what a gorgeous job yeah i'm sure like any job it has its ups and downs it does it. it's very tough and at the yeah. bottom line is with any industry there's the dollar you know and of they have course. to conform to that to too. be honest that was quite sobering to hear that a bestseller is 10,000 copies that's not very many in my head oh, well so if you saw a room full of 10,000 books that would be fairly daunting you know well I guess it's just interesting for for someone like me that that when I think of tv shows or downloads of podcasts you know you've got the, the lady vanishes podcast has hit six million downloads mm. um mm. It, anyway, it's just, it's interesting to realise one thing that, to flick on to a free podcast, another thing to invest 29 or $30 in it, something between two that's covers. That's true, and I think a lot of people don't commitment. make time to read either. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in my world say, oh, well, I'm a mum, I'm too busy, or I work, or I just got out of the habit of reading. I mm -hmm. think reading takes, in a, in a fast-paced, busy, stimulated world, reading is a bit old school in a sense, um, just to stop and be quiet and read words. But I love it. I think it's meditative and it transports you to someone else's world. And it, I think it does something. I can feel that it does something to your brain cells, though, because it's an investment mm. to actually read and suck some meaning out of those words that are on the page. It's a, rather than just having being bombarded mm. with images, 
which is so I agree. easy. Yeah, there's so, a sense I've always felt that sense of yeah, you're entering mm. agreement with the right, yeah. with the right. <laughs> yes. That's how I feel. Yeah. It's like, Just, yes, I'm going to listen to you whisper yeah. in my ear. Yeah. You know, yeah. and make, you're making time for yourself as well as them. Yeah. It's very intimate. It is. Really. Yes. So yeah. you're right. It's, I mean, I, I would like to think it's never going to go away because nothing can replace that process. Mm. It is a bit magical. Mm. Mm. Um yeah so there you go no that was fabulous so thanks again jude and we'll cobble all this together so we've got her interviews seamlessly flowing into all these parts um but just to summarize i guess jude's given a diagnosis in a sense hasn't she really um which is approaching it as a craft and that's yeah. all i've ever done because i started as a journalist mm. and just crafting one sentence after another and so just over all these decades mm. I've, I've never really approached it as an art form and I almost envy those who do and I would say if, if you're writing from that perspective don't give up it's a wonderful way to look at it you yeah. know well you've said about that about enjoying art that you're not good at and just but you've always said once you have a deadline it's, it's it work. changes yeah the walls close in so yeah keep it magical if you can but I got that message from her and I know in your recommendation for me to watch glow which you gave a few weeks ago I started watching a show like Glow as a writer, which instead of just absorbing as a viewer, mm. and I think I'm taking from our conversation with Jude, next time I read something, I'm gonna try and start reading as a writer. Mm. You know, I think that's, I feel like that's my long-term mm. homework because I haven't done that actively. I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm shadow reading my daughters in year 11 and I've, I've been quite happily reading her English books and her lit books, literature books, and um, as a result, I'm reading some strange and wonderful things. I'm reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein at the moment. I've just started. Um, so maybe I'll wake up my writer as I start reading now a bit more. And I think read the writers that you love. You love that mm. Irish girl. Marion Keyes. Yes. yes, and read and bubble along with her. And I think I'd like to talk with you um, about finding your voice, which is mm. something that do mention. She did. Um, and I think starting to read writers that you love is a good beginning mm. point for that too. yeah, yeah. so don't make it a task sure yeah fair enough that's good because uh, yeah. my main ones i love maggie Far maggie o'farrell who's an irish writer as well marion keys and um one of my favorite writers is a woman called curtis Sit sittenfeld she's a young younger than me she's a american author i love her writing so well, much maybe i'll revisit yeah. one of her books yeah, yeah. And, and start looking for the skill beneath Figure out pleasure. why I like yeah, them. Yeah, because yeah. you were asking that to do, you know, why do these books that do well do well? I mean, yeah. Okay, well, that's good. That's that's long-term homework. I'll yep. have to take that on board. Ugh. And just to finish up with, with a bit of a Planet Social update, I think I mentioned last week I was just going to quickly talk about LinkedIn because LinkedIn is not the sexiest of platforms in the social world. You know, Instagram gets all the attention. Facebook is twined in our lives. Um, but LinkedIn is used by 22% of social media users in Australia. So of the social media users are about 70% of Australians. So of those, nearly a quarter are on LinkedIn. And without going on and on about it, I would just say a couple of points of why LinkedIn should not be dismissed. Um, LinkedIn is actually surprisingly effective because it's not crowded. It's not a crowded platform like Facebook and Instagram. So your content gets a fairer hearing. Mm. So my recommendation for LinkedIn, it's not just if you're a job seeker, it's actually a great way to have a online record of your personal brand. Right. It's like having your, if you do it, if you do it reasonably well with a good profile image, essentially it's a nice online record of your work history. Mm. Um, and if you go the slight next level where you actually actively accept connections and get to that magic 500 number, because once you're 500 plus, you just sort of get a gold star and then <laughs> move on. I know. Um, and if you actually keep in touch with your industry and from time to time comment and actually say something, um, it can actually be quite surprisingly effective. So that's just my little shout out to LinkedIn that don't dismiss it. it is, might... is Donald Trump on LinkedIn? Oh, I hope not. Um, <laughs> he's just <laughs> Imagine what his profile would say. It'd be like, I am amazing. I am excellent. I'm a really, really good president. Um, no, let's hope he's not there. Oh. But yeah, so that's just a little shout out to LinkedIn. Um, it's surprisingly effective and 
Yeah, it's the little go for it. achiever go of, for of it. the social platforms. So there you go. Can I just say we're eating carrot cake again today <laughs> because <laughs> we are. a lovely friend yeah. of yours, Gary, um, I think said it. Yeah, emailed in and said that your mum cake made the most beautiful carrot cake. So we had carrot cake last week, and so I thought I'd try a different shop this week. It's not quite so um, <clears throat> central looking. It's a more <laughs> um, suburban, but still pretty. It's very cake. yummy. Mm. So in yeah. honour of your mum. Oh, thank and you. That's so sweet. With thanks to Simon, did you say? Was it Gary or was it Emma? I'm getting mixed oh. up now. Someone, it might have been my cousin Emma or my no, friend Gary. Very, was it Gary? Yes, he's Gary, he's yeah. English, so you have to say it like that. Uh -huh. It was Gaza. Um, yes. How mom. lovely. Isn't that nice? You yeah, know, memories of food. food. And you talked right. about food being love. Yes. And you go back to Marcel Proust, who wrote about the little, the memory of the smell of these little madeleines, these little cakes yeah. from his childhood, and that set off a seven-part series that went on for years and years. Look, and I think I've mentioned to you before that the anniversary of Mum's death, um, next year it will be the 20th anniversary of her death, and I think at the 10-year mark, even though that sounds like a long time in, it wasn't, in a way, I tried to pull together some sort of event gathering where we and one of the things that we ended up doing was we made we all bought food that mum was famous oh, for including her carrot cake. cake i'm sure that made an appearance um what was her other ones oh she, the kind of 70s food like we all used to kid around but she made tuna and rice casserole oh, lovely. Um, prawn cocktails well, things like that i can't remember and what else was there it was tuna and rice she made a good chicken pie she made a good pumpkin soup um so for her 20th anniversary next year i think we want to go a bit bigger and even some of the stuff we've talked about in this experience, you know, has made me think, I think we actually want to put on an event beyond our family Absolutely. to celebrate mum. Yeah, yeah. Carrot cake will be in it. So good. thank you, Gary. Because mum's carrot cake was, those who know mum will know it was a good one. It had a lot of ingredients. Mm. I remember the recipe was very complex. Mm. There was, it was a, I hate the word moist, but it was a thick, moist cake with a Beautiful. yummy icing, exactly like that. Oh. So, oh. That and look, thank you to everyone else who's, sent messages in yes. it's great um we're loving it cindy yeah. um, gave us a video where she read out a synopsis of yes. what she's working yes. out in the form of a poem and we've got nearly a hundred people in our group yeah we do who are you that's not fabulous say hello yeah. exactly we'd love to know where you came from some of them i'm a lot of them know us i think but oh, perhaps there are some newbies in there yeah. so definitely um you're so right yeah, I think the clinics closed for the, the day. The clinics closed. Yes. We've learned a lot, and that was that was really cool having Jude um, give us her time. So I'm yeah. glad we got it all working. And so your homework for this week yes. is study the craft. Yeah, ah, that's only going to take three that's days. That's only going to take exactly the rest <laughs> of my entire life. But that's um, no, that's that's a good thing to think of because it's definitely like I said, with even with Glow, the fact that season three has gone off the rails. Yeah, I'm learning from that yeah, too. Yeah, you will. And you'll see that in books too. Yeah. Oh, God. So there you go. Yep. But we better get back to our okay. carrot cake. So we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Nice <laughs>